Remembrance Sunday is a time to remember those who lost their lives in the conflicts of the First and Second World Wars and wars since then. And to remember those whose lives have been changed because of those conflicts. Today, many people within this nation and around the world will mark the day, though it may be quite different because of the COVID-19 restrictions. But people will remember the names of those they knew and whose memories they treasure. And we'll also be remembering those names engraved on our war memorials across the country. Names of those who left their communities and never returned. And as we join with everyone today, we pray for all who continue to work for peace within our divided and fractured world. I'm going to sing praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Please join in the words in yellow type. We're going to use this hymn of Alan Gaunt for our opening prayer. We pray for peace, but not the easy peace built on compliancy and not the truth of God. We pray for real peace, the peace God alone, love alone can seal. We pray for peace, but not a cruel peace, 
leaving God's poor bereft and dying in distress. We pray for real peace, enriching all the human race. We pray for peace, and not the evil peace, defending unjust laws and nursing prejudice, but for the real peace of justice, mercy, truth and love. We pray for peace, holy communion with Christ our risen Lord and every living thing. God's will fulfilled on earth and all creation reconciled. We pray for peace, and for the sake of peace, we look to the risen Christ, who gives the grace we need to serve the cause of peace and make our own self-sacrifice. God, give us peace. If you withdraw your love, there is no peace for us, nor any hope of it. With you to lead us on through death or tumult, peace will come. Amen. If you want to stand for the act of remembrance, please do so. Let us call before God, recall before God, those who have given their lives in the service of others, especially those known to us. They shall not grow old as we that are old left, that we are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Pat's now going to read our readings. Micah chapter 4, starting at verse 1. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. 
Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. And John chapter 15, starting at verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. One of the ways in which I could have reflected this morning at the beginning of a second national lockdown would have been to consider the war we're fighting against an invisible enemy and the sacrifices we are being asked to make for the common good. However, I'll leave you to do that some time to think about if you want to, because I've chosen instead this morning mainly to tell you something of a story. Early on in the year, before I heard of the coronavirus, I read something about the life of Rabbi Dr. Joseph Brewer. He was an outstanding religious scholar. He gained a PhD in philosophy and political economy and was a popular teacher. He became the dean of a well-known religious seminary in Frankfurt. And this was all despite the fact that he had very poor eyesight, which deteriorated. After morning prayer each day, Rabbi Brewer would go for a walk to collect his thoughts. And as his eyesight slowly worsened, it became more and more difficult for him to distinguish between the people he'd never met and those whom he'd known well. So he followed a Jewish teaching that said you should greet everyone with a smile and he doffed his hat to anyone he came across, his students, street cleaners, shop owners, anybody, whether he knew them well or not. In November 1938, Kristallnacht, or the Night of the Broken Glass, was a defining moment for German Jews. Synagogues were destroyed, Jewish businesses vandalised, 
and Jewish cemeteries desecrated. And in Frankfurt, Rabbi Brewer's synagogue was set alight and burned to the ground. And his seminary was forcibly shut down. All the men were ordered to gather in the courtyard of the local armory. And all Jewish men over the age of 60 were told to step forward. Rabbi Brewer was not yet 57, so he stayed where he was. But a muscular officer moved over to him and shouted, you're over 60, step forward. Rabbi Brewer decided there was little point in arguing with him. So he let himself be pushed into the group of the older men who shortly was sent home. He did not know at that time that all the other men were to be transported to the Buchenwald and Dachau concentration camps. Rabbi Brewer had only just arrived back home when there was a loud knocking on his door. A voice said, Mr. Rabbi, I must speak with you immediately. It was the same voice as the one that had told him to step forward outside the armory. The officer urged him immediately to leave Germany with his family. Rabbi Brewer asked, but why are you helping me? The reply came back, perhaps you don't recognise me in this uniform. I was the local police constable in this area for many years. Whenever we saw each other, you always made a point of greeting me. I couldn't watch them take you away. But you must really leave now. You don't have long. Rabbi Brewer did leave with his family and many members of his community. He went to Antwerp and then to New York, where he rebuilt his seminary and the community around it. And it continues today. It has a synagogue, several schools for children and a centre for religious scholarship. Through one German officer who was ready to risk his own life, innumerable lives have been touched because Rabbi Brewer survived. And that was all because the officer saw Rabbi Brewer as a human being, not as some sort of caric caricature deployed by the Nazi party. That person who had been polite to him for several years. We're told that we should learn lessons from history so we shouldn't make the same mistakes again. That story about Rabbi Brewer and the officer helps to show us the importance of building good relationships, showing all people respect, greeting them with a smile, whoever they might be. It teaches us to see others not according to their political affiliation or race or faith, or gender or nationality, but rather according to their humanity. And so on this Remembrance Sunday, when we remember those who have died as a result of war and those dying because of conflict and terrorism today, we long for that time when nations do not lift up weapons against other nations, when swords are beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, when we look at others who are different from us as friends, not enemies, and treat them respectively, when we love one another as Jesus taught us and are ready to act sacrificially for the good of others. So we continue in prayer, let us pray. 
Jesus, come among us as bringer of hope. We pray for the life of the world, for its diversity of culture and experience and life and faith. We pray for this world, for its leaders, and pray that all may work for justice and peace throughout the world. Jesus, come among us as bringer of healing. We pray for those whose lives have been and continue to be affected because of the conflicts of our world. We pray for those who, through their skill in medicine, bring healing to many people. We pray for all those who work in the conflict zones of the world as they seek to bring medical care in difficult circumstances. Jesus, come among us as bringer of light. We pray for hope for our world. We give thanks for the many people who bring light and hope into the world. We pray for the church as we seek to discover more of the hope that God sets before us. We pray that the light of the risen Christ will give hope as light shining in the darkness. Jesus come among us as bringer of peace. In the unresolved questions that this day brings, may we find peace. In bringing the memories of those who have died, may we find peace. In the world in which we live today, may we find peace. We spend a few moments in silence as we remember any particular people who are on our hearts or situations which are on our minds today. And we bring our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Please use whichever version you prefer. I'll use a modern form this morning. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing peace, perfect peace.
creator God, we commit to you the needs of the whole world. Where there is hatred, give love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is distrust, faith. Where there is sorrow, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And may the blessing and peace of God remain with us, with those for whom we have prayed, and with all we remember today, who are and have been caught up in the conflicts of this world. Amen. With the coronavirus restrictions that have been placed upon us, we'll simply be meeting on Zoom for worship, though there is the option of going to church uh, for uh, private prayer between 10.30 and 11.15 each uh, week. Um, but um, please join us next week on Zoom if you can, when John will be leading our service or alternatively attend the church for prayer there. Thank you.